Hello, this is exercise 3-2. I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of this exercise since a few students are struggling with it. The following three separate situations require adjusting journal entries to prepare financial statements as of April 30th. So this is key here. April 30th is the day where financial statements are going to be created. So we must ensure that all the expenses and or revenues are recorded as of April 30th that have been incurred prior to April 30th. For each situation, present both the April 30th adjusting entry, and that's what adjusting entries are for, to record those revenues or expenses or any adjustments to those to make sure they are incurred within the time period, and the subsequent entry during May to record the payment of the accrued expense. So we know we're going to be doing accrued expenses, and an accrued expense is any expense incurred but not yet paid in cash or recorded. If you haven't noticed yet, in Blackboard, where your PowerPoints and notes are, I've put a little sheet in there to kind of walk you through the types of adjusting entries, whether they're accruals or deferrals, um, the type of journal entry you have. For example, on accrued expense, this is the one we're doing right now. When you record the expense incurred, debit expense, credit payable. And then when the cash is actually paid, we'll reverse the payable and decrease cash. Okay, first one. On April 1st, the company retained an attorney for a flat fee, monthly fee, of $3,500. The payment for April legal services was made by the company on May 12th. So we have a few things happening here in A. The first thing we know is that the company retained an attorney on April 1st. $3,500 will be paid to the attorney, but not until May 12th. And we are asked to make a journal entry for the, the uh, adjusting entry on April 30th. So we really have three dates. April 1st. Here's a little timeline to help us out with what's going on. On April 1st, the attorney was hired for the month of April. Now, when the attorney was retained, no payment was made, and the attorney had not actually done any work. So we do not have an entry on the 1st. On the 30th, we're asked to make the adjusting entry. Now from the 1st to the 30th is the time period the attorney was going to do work. So on April 30th, the month has ended, the attorney has earned its full month of work. Therefore, the company must record an expense incurred for that one month, even though the attorney will not be paid until the 12th. So on April 30th, An expense will be recorded for the attorney fees, or in this case, the legal fees expense that have been incurred. And the full month has elapsed, the time period has elapsed that the attorney was hired for, so the full $3,500 will be expensed on the 30th. However, the attorney will not be paid until the 12th. So on the 30th, we must set up the promise to pay later. Legal fees payable. As a reminder, a payable or a liability is credited when it increases. It's the promise to pay later, and the expenses are increased with debit. Now the problem asks us to make the corresponding entry in May. May 12th, the payment to the attorney was actually made. Hopefully this clues you in that if a payment was made, cash is decreased. We no longer have a payable because we're reducing it. So we'll do the opposite 
of the payable that we did on the 30th for the 12th. The payable is decreased, and then the cash goes down for the amount that was paid. These are the two entries for A. B is slightly more complicated. A $900,000 note payable requires 12% annual interest. The interest was last paid on April 20th, and the next payment is due on May 20th. As of April 30th, $3,000 of interest expense has been accrued. I'm going to do another timeline to help us. We won't be recording the notes payable because that has been done already in the past. And the payment on the 20th has already been completed. What we're asked to do is the adjusting entry and the corresponding entry later in May. The problem tells us that $9,000 is to be paid every month on the 20th. Between the 20th of April and the 30th of April, $3,000 of interest has been incurred. The problem tells us that the $3,000 of interest has been incurred. You could also do the math. You could take $9,000 a month, divide it by the full 30 days, and then multiply it by 10 days. But the problem gives us that it's just $3,000 incurred for the 10 days. Our entry is very similar to the one we just did for A. On the 30th, we need to make sure we have the adjusting entry to record all the expense that's been incurred but not yet paid. Again, we want to record an expense, but a promise to pay later. In this case, we will use interest expense. $3,000 of interest expense actually accrued, and the promise to pay that amount later. So now the expense for $3,000 for the interest for those 10 days has been recorded, and then the payable, the payable, the promise to pay later has been recorded also. So that was as of April 30th. Now we have to make the corresponding entry on the 20th also. What happened between April 30th, really May 1st, and May 20th is another 20 days elapsed. And those 20 days equate to $6,000 of interest. $9,000 every month, $3,000 was incurred the first 10 days, $6,000 was incurred the next 20 days. So again, you could do the math on it. could have done the math and figured the $9,000 interest at 30 days is $300 a day of interest. And for the last 20 days at $300 a day, $6,000 of interest was incurred for the 20 days of time. So we must record the next entry, the payment, on the 20th. But again, we have a few things going on here. We have $6,000 of interest incurred additionally to the $3,000 we already recorded. We have a payment of $9,000, and we're reversing the amount that we set up in the first entry that said we'd pay the $3,000 later. So the first thing I'd suggest is just reversing the payable, because on the 12th, we're actually paying it off. And I say suggest because we're going to have two debits in this entry. It doesn't matter which debit you put first. So we reverse the amount of the payable we set up on the 30th, because now we're going to pay it off on the 12th. But we also have the $6,000 of interest expense we've incurred for the next 20 days. We need to record that also. And we 
again, the main reason why we're recording this at all is the fact that the payment was made. So we'll record the payment. Again, payment means money going out, means cash, $9,000 reduction. It's really important that you know which side your debits and credits increase and decrease on. So you have to review Chapter 2 to be able to understand these journal entries. The payable decreased with a debit. The expense increased with a debit. And cash decreased with a credit. So on the 12th, we recorded the reverse of the payable because now the payment has been made. We're recording the expense for the next 20 days and we're recording the actual payment of the full $9,000.